Hey everybody, it's Will. I want to show you a Mark 10 I made yesterday. Um, this one here is a Mark 10 Elite, and I'll show you this all the specifics and everything in just a minute. I just want to take a quick moment and talk a little bit about the Christmas season here. Um, things are a little bit crazy this time of year, um, so I am currently making knives up until probably about the 17th or so. Um, after that, I, I, I mean, obviously, you're still welcome to buy stuff off my website, but I can't really guarantee a Christmas delivery date. So if you're interested in getting a knife from me for Christmas, um, you'll need to order before the 17th of December. So I just want to let you guys know, um, just so that you, everything is, is out there and transparent, uh, you know, obviously, if you order after that, there is a chance it could be delivered by Christmas, but there's also a pretty good chance that it won't. Um, I've seen some pretty crazy stuff this year from USPS and FedEx and also UPS, um, you know, just in actually getting materials, uh, deliveries for myself, um, and also sending things out. I've seen, you know, <laughs> two to three day shipping go to two to 11 days. Um, yeah, there was literally I had a package that we were watching the tracking number every single day. It was stuck in Raleigh, uh, the sorting department, from the 2nd until the 9th, and then it just popped up in Omaha, Nebraska somehow. So, um, yeah, my customer was like, hey, what's going on with this? I was like, I have no freaking idea. We were just watching it every day, and we're like, okay, well, I guess they'll find it and ship it eventually, and eventually, yeah, they did, um, but still, things get a little bit crazy this time of year. So, um, anyway, let me take a look at this, and uh, I'll show you the kind of specifics, what's going on here. There's a lot going on, and this is kind of a subtle knife. Um, just from a visual standpoint, it looks relatively plainish. Um, the finish on this is all polished titanium. So this is all done with a nice polish to it. It's been bead blasted down in the recesses here. So underneath the scale and everything, it's all bead blasted. Um, but everything is nicely polished. Now, um, c -Tech scales on it, that's pretty obvious right off the bat. So that's a kind of a higher end material. c -Tech is is a um, in this case, transparent resin that is uh, basically colored red, in this case again, um, and it's set on a mesh honeycomb here made out of aluminum. It's really nice stuff. It's not what I would call structurally sound. Um, C-Tech is a little, bit, uh, a little bit flexible, and so because of that, you shouldn't really use it in a structural way. Um, a lot of people do. They kind of make the mistake of thinking that C-Tech is stronger than it is. It can also chip on the edges too, which is why it's great in the Mark 10s because it's shrouded on three sides. It's very well protected and um, you know typically I don't have any issues with it on the Mark 10s. I did have some issues with it on Mark 6s and so I stopped using it on Mark 6s, but on the Mark 10s it seems just perfectly fine. So um, it's an A2 frame on it, so that means that, of course, it's got the nice heavy chamfers on here. They're all done by hand. And um, it has all sorts of little compound geometries up here. If you take a look at the spine of the blade, you notice that I do two chamfers on the side of the spine, actually crown the spine on that blade, and then do a whole bunch of little angles and everything up here. Radius the trigger, the little flipper tab on it. All the little details, chamfered edges on the blade. Got a flipper recess there for when you're actually flipping the knife. And then there's a backspacer. Backspacer is black G10 with red kieranite inlays. Little machined micro inlays in there. Those are three thirty seconds of an inch. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit of precision going on. Um, we got a red G10 backspacer or I'm sorry, a pocket clip. And uh, I polished the underside of it and it makes it much, much easier to pocket. I know some people were telling me they were having a hard time getting these on their pockets and uh, just polishing the underside of it makes it so much easier. So that's what I've started doing these days uh, for the Mark 10s. Um, nicely polished hardware on everything. So everything's nicely done, scotch bright satin there. And then it is jeweled on the inside. I don't know if I can show you that very well though. Kind of tough. But it is jeweled. But here's our blade. So the blade on this one here is CPM 154. 
uh, nothing too crazy exotic or anything like that, but I've been having really good results with this stuff. Uh, a customer of mine actually emailed me a couple days ago and basically said that he had been using one of my blades in CPM 154 for the past nine months, and he was pretty much purposely beating the crap out of it. <laughs> I mean, really. Um, he said that he had delimbed a whole bunch of trees to make some walking sticks for a little old lady when he was on a hike, and he had uh, gutted a whole bunch of carpet and cleaned out a car, and, and uh, you know, basically did a whole whole bunch of really intense work with his knife, and um, he had yet to have to sharpen it. And uh, he was like, are you using some kind of crazy miracle steel? And I was like, no, that's, not, that's nothing in, insane. It's just CPM 154 with a good heat treat. And, uh, you know, my, my heat treat is, is you know, it's, it's pretty good. Um, you know, I have a professional outfit do it. They do the nitrogen cycle on it, uh, which gives it a little bit more flexibility. It makes it not chip. Um, they do it in a true vacuum and do it exactly to crucible specs. And, and frankly, I think CPM 154 is so underrated because most of the production manufacturers, they don't treat it right. They don't hand grind it. And, you know, they're not there gauging the temperature of the steel, making sure that it doesn't lose its temper. I mean, they do their final grinding and finishing. And uh, this to me is, is just a better way of doing things. It really gives you a superior edge holding capability. Now this is a, a drop point, of course, and you'll notice, of course, it's hand rubbed satin on the bevels here, and then also on the flats, it's it's more of a, a polish. Um, it's not quite a, a mirror polish, but it's you know it's polished. I mean, you can definitely tell. Very pretty crown spine, of course, and then there's the back. Just a nice looking blade. And that that edge, I mean, it's got it's got an edge on it, man. This thing is just wicked sharp. Um, there's our lockup, right about um, you know 10, 15 percent, pretty early, not bad. And then all the other little things there. You can see some of the jeweling. There we go. That's a good shot of the jeweling there. It is jeweled up in there. I wasn't lying. <laughs> um, and I have a bearing ramp on this one too, so you know when you go to close this thing, it's got a little ramp that pushes that bearing up. And then here's your action, the uh, actual detent. Boom, that's nice. That came out really good. Here's the uh, flipping. Sweet. It flips like a champ. Now this isn't really lubricated. I put a little bit of one shot on it when I was making it, but um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes case lube actually works pretty well because it it dries. It, it uh, goes into dry lubricant stage, and um, you know it, it doesn't uh, collect a whole lot of dust, which is why I like it. But um, anyway, uh, you can flip this thing with the pinky. You know that's not bad. I think that's a pretty good flipper. That blade, though, man, I mean, that is the ticket right there. That's why this is an elite... Well, I mean, honestly, the, the whole package here is uh, is pretty high-end finishes, but that blade, man, that took forever to do. But I think it's well worth it. That is a beautiful blade. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So this one's going up on my website for sale, guys. Um, like I said, obviously, if you order before, like, the 17th of December you're probably gonna get your stuff by Christmas. So, yeah, just putting a bug in your ear. Um, I wanted to do a video on this specific knife. It's been a while since I've done any knife videos and uh, I kind of regret not being able to spend a little bit more time on YouTube, but you know, the thing is, um, my time's real limited this time of year and uh, it gets a little bit crazy. Um, yeah, of course, uh, you know, Merry Christmas to all you guys in case I don't get any more videos out before then. Um, certainly appreciate all the support this year. Black Friday went out, went off great, and um, you know, everybody was real happy with that. Um, yeah, I think uh, I'll go ahead and end it there. Appreciate it, guys. See you later. Bye.